Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you, second week of July, with the European Open preview. Lots of news this weekend. Uh, no movement in FX. Brexit made their agreement. Cable traded up to 133.18, back down to 92. David Davis has resigned with a couple of other sort of hardline Brexit reps in the government. Cable does not know what to do with this. To me, it looked like a positive step for the UK. But of course, I have my bias. I was in the Remain camp. So you got to be careful with that. But on a pure price basis, now through the highs, 133.15 or 18, is probably worth a calculated long. So we'll be watching that very closely. We're at 91 now. Elsewhere, it was moderately risk on. S&P's added another 10 handles, 27.72. This is one of these sort of shockingly illogical rallies, short covering. Chinese stock market still sick. Uh, Trump is headed to Europe to get shat on in the UK uh, and to question NATO. I mean, it's pretty serious, you know, stirring up a hornet's nest here with NATO. Perhaps he has a point. Countries need to contribute more or at least agree to their contributions as a percentage of GDP. But again, his methods and his style, um, it's just not going to go over too well in Europe. For a guy who's lived here over 20 years now, I can tell you um, that kind of brash, American, in-your-face style uh, does not go down well uh, amongst European structures. So that looks... It looks a bit shaky, all this. Uh, and then you combine this with the North Korean situation, which, again, I'm not super sure how this is going. doesn't look too good uh, based on the North Korean response. Obviously, any response from the Trump people we take with a grain of salt. I can't tell if this is... Um, just step one in a 50-step process of negotiations or this whole thing is going to you know, blow up, for lack of a better, better word. Don't know. A lot of uh, geopolitics, a lot of brexit -y stuff, NATO stuff, North Korean stuff on the table here. It definitely muddies the water. So, quick look at the charts cable as we said looks interesting technically over 133.18 sterling yen is already broken not much to do there um, on the risk on side we got cad yen 84.45 bunch of highs here so you got a sort of horizontal probably through 50 is is the trade Bank of Canada this week, 90% of the analysts think they're going to raise rates. So there's some logic behind this trade. CAD higher against the weak yen. We also have emerging market charts that are, that are worth a look. Again, for me personally, it doesn't make tons of sense, but price is below 1340 now in uh, dollar rand looks like they could extend. On this kind of chart pattern, you really want to print. So you're looking for a print um, right around 1339. Bounce, and then next time through, use it as a place to get short. And then, of course, dollar yen, which has been absolutely dead recently. 110.30 um, is your kind of point for the next leg down. On the top side, you got to wait for a 111.16. Bitcoin kind of just easing higher, no drama, 6,700. 
Um, a lot of you have asked me to do a tutorial video on core short, core long for longer term positions the way that we do it here which is buy an amount with the idea that it's a medium term hold sell a large portion of that amount to get your average safe uh, and then rinse and repeat I will do a video on that uh, at lunchtime today we'll use Bitcoin as an example it's worked out pretty well for us the Bitcoin even though it's been in a downward trend now for basically six months um, we do have a tidy long position at a very very good average using the core long or you could, if you're selling something core short methodology so I will do something at lunchtime today core long core short um, to let some of you sort of new traders who are watching this have an idea of this style of trading all right enough said for now I will uh, see you guys at the New York Open ciao